Welcome to another video. My name is Jared Watney. I create social media content for Super Yacht and I fly bush planes around South Africa when I'm not sailing the seas. Well, this is about as big as it gets of a day. Are we going to saying anything? I actually am. Thanks, Yara. Shit. <laughs> we are taking off at Panorama, starting our journey at 6.10, getting the plane down sort of two hours at a time, stopping at different airfields along the way, making sure everything is all good. We've got snacks. The back is fully loaded. Essentially, we are still underweight uh, under our maximum takeoff wake, so all is good there. Fully fueled. Clear skies. This is the journey that I've been waiting for for a long time. This is a little build up leading up to this moment and then we'll be taking off. Okay, I'm going to lining up from my 02 left and not departure. Uh, you ready? I am. Tempe, this is our first big stop. Uh, that's our first stop actually. Filling up here and then um, got another stop somewhere else. This was a this was a tarred runway as you can see, so it grips a little bit more as you come in. Tom had his hands full there, but uh, other than that, rock and roll. There are a lot of details I'm leaving out about this trip, like why tar is harder to land on in this type of plane, fuel planning, cost, and more. But here's what you need to know. I did not sleep the night before. Nerves, stress, excitement maybe, I'm not really sure. But a 550 nautical mile trip in a freshly built new kit airplane requires a lot of concentration. That being said, I live for experiences like this. Truly an experience I know many wish to have and for that I'm beyond grateful. This was a road trip in the sky. The ultimate freedom mixed with a hefty batch of risk and stress. But man, did I feel alive up there. A little over halfway is a small town called Krafrenet, about a two hour flight from Neisner, which is our final destination. After hitting a patch of turbulence so hard that removed Tom's headset from his head, we decided it was best to just take a minute. Although we didn't quite realize how long that minute would last. Uh, we made it to Krafrenet. <laughs> oh, legs and bum and back and everything is super sore. Wind is pumping, so we've tied everything down and we are going accommodation hunting for the night. Tom, crap and net, bro. <laughs> Nothing's fully booked here, eh? <laughs> Weather was getting really bad, wind was out of control at our destination where we were going. Um, this journey is supposed to be fun, so the moment it started becoming out of control and we we're bumping our heads with the turbulence that uh, we just decided it's not worth it. Time to go and chill. Good. 
morning everyone we are in the most insane place here uh, something I did not expect to find in Crafrenet so sky is looking clear a little bit of haze usually usually sort of says that the air is pretty stable so we're gonna get in the air around 7 7 20 and uh, head straight for Plettenberg Bay and make the jump through the mountains bit of low cloud there at the moment so hopefully by the time we get there it clears up and uh, then do this last beautiful stretch basically almost from here all the way through is just some of the most unbelievable visuals i had 11 hours of sleep last night so i'm ready for today i'm so glad i was feeling so weird yesterday let's get this last stretch done show you what this little last leg looks like and uh, get this baby home to highway airfield where it will live for a little while Whew, exciting stuff it's tom clearing uh, bits of wood Stuck in the engine. Stuck in the engine. We found an entire bird's nest on the inside of the cowl here. Like bits of wood and an entire nest. Birds are quicker on here at Craft Renette. Alright, pre-flight and then uh, get in the sky. Clear, there's your bird. Bro. <laughs> Bro, it's like my fucking home is leaving. <laughs> <laughs> that is a hundred percent the bird. Go, clear. Clear. <laughs> it's been an interesting 24 hours. It has indeed. Stayed in the beautiful town of Crawford and that's actually not even a sarcastic joke. It's quite nice here. Yeah. It was sarcastic when it started. <laughs> Definitely. But after staying in a five-star hotel, and uh, being treated, we're now ready to rock and roll through to Neisner. Okay, so we have a little rhyme that we do so we can remember all the pre-flight or pre-takeoff checks. Basically that, that rhyme is, too many pilots fly in heaven too soon. So what we do, T for two is test the controls. Okay, so we want to test both ailerons on both sides. Make sure that they're both working. Test the elevator, full control, and then test the rudder as well. Okay, so that all looks good. The next thing, which is part of the T, is the trim. Okay, so we want to make sure that the aircraft is trimmed correctly so we don't have to put too much force in trying to lift it off the runway. Where it is right now, because we're kind of heavy at the back, is perfect. Okay, mixtures. So this is M, mixtures, masters, mags. So in this plane, we don't have a mixture, but we do have a master key. And we have two magnetos. These are basically ignition systems, but we call them magnetos. Those are both on. And then pitch, so P. We don't have a pitch in here, so in this plane what I'll just check is that the choke is all the way in. F is flaps and fuel. Okay, so we've got five degrees of flaps for this aircraft on takeoff. Fuel, we want to make sure all our fuel valves are open and in the correct position. And all looks good, we have got a fuel flow there. Then I is instruments. We're making sure that our barometer is correctly set up. That all other instruments are working correctly, like gyros and things like that. On this plane everything's electronic, so we don't need to test for that. Hatches and harnesses. Okay, so we make sure that doors are closed and secure. Make sure that everything at the back there is secure. And then last thing is temperatures, pressures, all good on there. Okay, so we're actually enough to do our run up and then seat belts are on. So what we can do now is just to run up an engine check. We'll push the, egg, the engine to a fairly high RPM to simulate what it would be like operating at, speed, at altitude. Okay, we'll push that to 4000 RPM. Okay, brakes are holding, so those check. I'm happy. You happy? I'm happy. Ready when you are. Let's roll. nautical miles from Willamore. A uh, bit of a surprise, we've actually got a friend of ours, Echo India Delta, John, flying the glider in from Plet to meet us halfway and essentially escort us back to Nysa. Really cool actually, love that there's a community like this that does these sorts of things. So, um, the aviation community, general aviation, is actually a lot bigger than you think, even in a little spot like South Africa. Okay, she is so pretty. 
<laughs> Thanks, John. Thanks so much for being here, man. It's awesome. Oh, man, that is so sick. Traffic in the Nyza area, Echo India Foxtrot currently 1,200 feet. Just passing over the Eastern Head wall route in, inland now for highway. Ladies and gentlemen, I have my house in sight somewhere in there. It sure is pretty. You happy to pass the tower at highway one? Yeah. That was a pretty serious little flyby, bro. We had a nice little tail yeah, with us. Yeah. Done and done and yes! Made it. I can't believe it. I'm now I'm like stoked. <laughs>